Hello and welcome to your program called Hyperlink, where we address the youth on many topics concerning them and their parents. In our previous episode, we discussed the issue of teen lying. Today, we will answer questions relating to teen drug abuse and why. We as Christian youth should prevent it. But first, let's go and see the opinions of the youth and their parents on this topic. This is also really hard in the United States because teenagers are often faced with a lot of peer pressure from their friends at school and everywhere else in, um, to try drugs. Preventing your teenager from doing drugs is something hard and most teenagers statistically will try it once in their life. But to help, a teenage, to help your teenager avoid trying drugs, you basically tell them about the effects of it. Tell them what it's going to do to their body and relate it to something that they like. You know, let them know that if they do drugs, they're not going to be able to play basketball right, if that's what they like. Or if they do drugs, they're not going to be able to drive a car correctly. So relate it to something that they like. Um, and that'll, I think that'll have the biggest impact. Also, teens are very self-conscious, so tell them, let them know that drugs will mess up their image, their body image. It'll make them look different. Um, it'll make them not be able to function. And I think that's the best way to get through a teen because at this point, they're very concerned about their self-image. Thank you for participating with us and giving us your honest opinions. Drugs are people wreckers. That is why many youth now steer clear of getting involved with illegal drugs. For about 40 years from the 1960s, many young people thought that taking drugs was cool even if the drugs did cause more problems than they solved. But smart kids soon realized that drugs were killing their friends, causing sickness and problems with money and creating barriers with people they otherwise could have related to. Youth wisdom is becoming stronger in many areas. Many teens are starting to rethink what is cool and what is not. They don't think it's cool to make yourself sick from drugs or to always have no money because you've wasted it on drugs. Youth don't think that it's cool to not be able to hold down a job or have people always nag you because they can see the damage you are doing because of your drug abuse. Now let's go and answer the first question. How can I prevent my teenagers from taking drugs? While your child is learning to become independent, you will still need to guide the way. This is especially true when it comes to serious issues like drug use, because it is not just your son or daughter that you are dealing with. There are the drug dealers who would love to get to your child hooked on their drugs, or the negative peers who would use your child to validate their drug using behavior. Therefore, it is very important that you make a conscious effort to set the rules where teen drug use is concerned. When it comes to teen drug use, an ounce of prevention is worth so much more than a pound of cure. Follow these tips on preventing teen drug use and you will enjoy a drug-free family. One, be there for your son or daughter when he or she needs to get out of a bad situation. Be the scapegoat. I can't do that. My parents would kill me. Or be the parent who will pick up their teen without repercussions if they find the party they have gone to has drugs available or their friend has been drinking. Two, get to know your teen's friends and their parents on a first name basis. <clears throat> This will help you know what your teen is doing and you may make a good friend to boot. Three, keep connected in the after school hours. If you can't be home with your teen, call and leave notes. Have another adult supervise your teen or sign them up for an after school program. If these things aren't possible, establish a routine for your teenager and keep them busy during this time. Four, talk to your teen about often about drugs. Use icebreakers from television shows or the radio in the car. Remember these are conversations, not lectures. Be calm if your teen begins to argue with you about these rules. Sometimes teens feel if things get emotional, they can get out of rule or consequence. 
Don't fall into this power struggle trap. Five, get your teen involved in extracurricular activities. Schools offer sports or clubs. Community organizations offer classes and church youth groups. These will help your teen mold their identity in a positive way and give them less time doing nothing and becoming bored. Studies have shown youth that have less time to just hang out are less likely to do drugs. Six, ask questions when your teen makes plans to go out. Who are they going to be with? Where are they going? What will they be doing? And so forth. Then check up on them. Call other parents and do this together. Let your teen know that you take role as their parent very seriously. Seven, you be a role model for them. Don't drink and don't ever use illegal drugs. Eight, unite your family against drugs using strong family beliefs. Tell your teen that drug use of any kind will not be tolerated in your family. Be clear so that there is no misinterpretation. Ask if your teen understands the ex expectations that your family believes there are other healthier ways to enjoy life and fix problems rather than escaping into a drug haze. Nine, connect with your youth by doing things together as a family. Make this a routine outing and have your youth help plan it. Eat family meals together. Studies have shown that kids who enjoy dinner together with their parents on a normal basis are less likely to become involved with drugs. 10. Drop any baggage you may be carrying. Don't allow the mistakes you made as a teenager or young adult to influence your teen in a negative way. Tap into the mature adult you've become and let the past go. Let's go on to another question. I often heard that marijuana is harmless. Is this true? One of the persistent lies that youth hear is that marijuana is a safe drug. Supposedly, marijuana is no more harmful than tobacco, but studies have shown that this is false. Researchers at the University of California tested marijuana to see its effects. They found that an ingredient of marijuana called THC causes cancerous tumors. They also found that THC doesn't allow your body to fight viruses and infections well. This means if you use marijuana, you are deciding that you want to be sick more. The university researchers also found that marijuana smoke contains four times more dangerous tar than tobacco smoke. So is much more likely to cause lung cancer. Therefore, if you use marijuana after learning this, you are deciding that you would rather get lung cancer than not get it. And don't forget, any type of smoking is harmful for you anyway. We'll go to the next question. Can you tell us the warning signs of teenage drug abuse? Yes, sure. But please note that even though some of these warning signs of drug abuse may be present in your child, it does not mean that they are definitely abusing drugs. There are other causes for some of these behaviors. Even though life stage of adolescence is a valid reason for many of them to exist. On the flip side of that, do not ignore the warning signs of teenage drug abuse. If six of these signs, not all in the same category, are present for a period of time, you should talk to your teen and ask some professional help. Signs at home. Loss of interest in family activities. Disrespect for family rules. Withdrawal from responsibilities. Verbally or physically abusive. Sudden increase or decrease in appetite. Disappearance of valuable items or money. Not coming home on time. Not telling you where they are going. Constant excuses for behavior and spending a lot of time in their room. Signs to be aware of at school. Sudden drop in grades, loss of interest in learning, sleeping in class, poor work performance, 
not doing homework, defiant of authority, poor attitude towards sports, reduced memory and attention span, not informing you of teacher meetings or open houses and so forth. What about physical and emotional signs that you should look out for? Changes, friends, smell of alcohol or marijuana on breath or the body, unexplainable mood swings and behavior, negative argumentative, paranoid or confused, destructive and anxious, overreacts to criticism, acts rebellious, sharing few if any of their personal problems, doesn't seem as happy as they used to be, overly tired or hyperactive, drastic weight loss or gain, unhappy and depressed, cheats, steals, always needs money or has excessive amounts of money, and slopiness in appearance. Let's now move on to the next question. What does the Bible say about addiction and drugs? The Bible does not directly address any form of illicit drug use. The Bible says your body is a temple for God who dwells in you, and it is not your own. Jesus Christ paid the highest price imaginable so you could live. Not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Having bought us with his own life, Christ is delighted to create in us something entirely new, something that is somewhat bizarre. By indwelling us with his spirit, he has turned us into bodily temples of sorts. So now, caring for our health is not just a matter of good stewardship. It is a matter of respectful piety. To pollute or harm our bodies is to destroy the house of God. This is both wondrous and terrifying. Therefore, you have to look after your body. Filling it with drugs, tobacco, or alcohol is not looking after it. In summary, the Bible teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Groups such as Youth Challenge have countless tragic stories about youth who have wrecked their lives with drugs. If you are on drugs now, get off them as fast as you can before they drain your money, health, and self-esteem. If you are not on drugs, great. Make sure you have the courage and persistence to refuse them. There are no good stories about people who stay on illegal drugs. Let's now move on to our story for the day. Mark's friends regarded him as a loser. He didn't do well at school. His parents split up when he was 14. They left him and his brothers to look after themselves. And he was always getting into trouble. Jonathan was just the opposite. He did well in everything he tried. He was popular at school, his parents were doctors and they always had money. But something changed. Mark makes good. When Mark's father walked out, the family needed money desperately. So Mark called up all the stores in his area looking for work. He finally got a part-time job selling burgers. This didn't give him much money, but it was better than nothing. He learned to cook and decided he would like to be a chef. Mark's boss said he would train Mark and as time went on, Mark became a cook at the burger restaurant with higher pay. One of the other workers at the restaurant, Colin, invited Mark to the youth group church meeting. Mark was not a participating Christian, but thought this would be a good way to make friends. He started attending church and then became an active Christian and attends all the church youth activities and meetings. Mark found that one of the other guys in the youth group worked at a large city restaurant and the restaurant was looking for a trainee chef. Mark applied. He got the job after his friend in the youth group recommended him and loved the work so much that he eventually became a well-paid chef. He earned good money while doing something he loved. Jonathan loses everything. Jonathan's story ended tragically. 
His parents gave him everything he wanted, including a large allowance. But he laughed at Christians who tried to get him to come to the church youth group. Instead, he started buying drugs. He tried marijuana, ecstasy, then heroin and crack. He was always sick, lost interest in his studies, and stole money to pay for his expensive drug addiction. One rainy night, Jonathan landed in jail when a police bus caught him selling drugs. He lost his reputation, money, and friends. This is why parents and priests persist that teenagers attend youth meetings on a regular weekly basis, where they will learn spiritual growth and will keep them away from bad friends and peer pressure that leads to destruction. So this ends our episode for today on drug abuse. I hope you benefited from this topic and it will help you think twice before doing drugs. See you in our next episode where we will discuss the issue on teenage depression. Meet us next week and tell your friends to join you. God bless you and see you then. Thank you.